Alan, you ready to go to Plymouth Rock, Massachusetts? Alan. Alan. You ready to go to Plymouth Rock, Massachusetts? I am too. What do you think? What do you think when you, um, Matthew, when you hear him? You're about the same age. When you hear him, say where we're at. We're in Rhode Island. Island. We're in Rhode Island. Greenwich, isn't it? Yeah. Greenwich, Rhode Island. It's where we are in Best Western. What, do you, what, what goes through your mind when you see Sean preaching? From the same Alan, this isn't a very good day. Do you see any difference in his approach? Why the fact that the people seem to be supporting what he's saying, that they're liking it, that they're... Hey, it's your reaction. I want to hear Matthew first, and then I'll go to you, okay? But for one thing, he don't preach on sins. He just tells everybody God loves them and God don't love everybody. God said, Jacob, no. have I loved? Esau, have I hated? Hey, man. What about that? <laughs> God said he hates all the workers of iniquity. Yes. God said he hates all the workers of iniquity. What about that? Where is the value of preaching all this, all this hate, all this disrespect, all this name calling, all this, you know what? It seems to me, whatever the religion is, that the reason you have a preacher is to bring people into the fold. That whatever you're, you, you know, come on in. Well, I gotta tell you, if I, were, if I were out there and I wasn't believing, okay, and I just didn't know, I mean, I'd be your perfect target then, right? I mean, I'm walking around and I'm not sure what I believe in and all that, then, then your job, the whole job of preaching is not to preach to the choir, it's to preach to the people out there who aren't sure. And you know what? When I hear your message, if I wasn't decided on what I believe, if I heard oh, your Lord message, it would scare me away. I'd say, I don't want a God that's going to yell at me, going to scream again, and I'll take his message. For years, and when I when they say that he don't preach against sin, Sean does <laughs> preach against sin. But this is how cranberries look when they're grown. This is how cranberries look when they're grown, growing. This is at Plymouth Rock, Massachusetts, January the eighth. Will you guys leave me? Hide thou, dude. Look at it. You getting it? I'm trying to get to what it says about these uh, flags. Okay.
Sisters, the Martins came on the Mayflower. We didn't really realize it until today we saw a name Martin. Well, and where are you living it's, now? Uh, Indiana. We're from Kentucky originally, but well, he was born there, but my husband and I are from there. But I was born, that was my maiden name, was Martin. Mm -hmm. The story of the cranberry industry is a long and colorful one. It encompasses both the natural history of the berry and the social history of the people who have cultivated it, as well as a fascinating lexicon of terms, some of which may be a little misleading. Let's start with the term ocean spray. For most people, ocean spray means cranberries. But it is neither the ocean This is the old-fashioned method of cranberry box raising cranberries. A bog uses only fresh water from an adjacent lake, pond, or stream. Today, most bogs are also equipped with sprinklers. Bogs. That term, too, may need some clarification. A bog, despite its name, is dry. The word bog, and probably the idea that one is wet, comes from the fact that cranberry farms are built on peat swamps. But, as is the case of beaches and sand, it's the peat, and not the swamp, that's the necessary element. In fact, in making a bog, all the water is drained from the land, which is then cleared and drained up to the okay. orange level. This is Plymouth Rock, Massachusetts. Where the pilgrims landed. Did I miss it? 
Man. Dad, I gotta get me a pill out of that car. What kind of pill? Oh, that red bag? I think I got some in that red bag. Come on, Dad. No, I didn't. This is the trolley we're going to ride for the tour. Now we're going down through the parking lot of Benny's closet. You might think this is rather strange, but we do it for a reason. Now we're going down through the parking lot of Benny's closet. You might think this is rather strange, but we do it for a reason. Some of the people that come to visit Plymouth come by boat. When they get here, they have no transportation. And yet they do need groceries, maybe, maybe medical supplies, some beer, ale, water, beer, wine, whatever. They get just about everything down here. Liberty, education, and morality. And the lady standing up on top represents faith. She has been struck by lightning several times over the years. And the names of all the pilgrims are inscribed along the side of the monument. And the granite for that statue came from the state of Maine. Hmm. Isn't that <laughs> beautiful? Yeah. But the plastic was one of the first women school teachers in this country. Just ahead on the right hand side, the great building on the corner is the Plymouth Federal Savings Act loan built in 1805, and that is still in use today. Right around the corner, the Plymouth County Courthouse built in 1820. That too is still in use today. And on the left hand side, the large white building is the old Colony Club, established in 1769. North Street, just ahead on the left, was originally called Green Street. It goes right back down to the ocean. From the front, Mayflower 2, Mayflower Society House, and the Spur House. If you look off to the left, from Smith, you can see the clown blowing the bubbles out there. Mugger <laughs> Mugger Rest, and on the right hand side, just ahead, old, they own the trolley. Now, if you go in and have a meal sort of dog trolley ticket, they will give you a discount on your meal. They also have breakfast for a dollar in there, a very good breakfast. Bacon, or sausage, and eggs, home fries, and toast for a dollar. Right there. That's from 6.30 to 9, they have that. 6.30 to 8.30, I beg your pardon. Breakfast for a The street on the left, at the lights is Leiden Street, the first street of Plymouth, named after the town of Leiden, Holland. The Pilgrim sailed from Plymouth yeah. to Holland, back to Plymouth. Can you go over a little bit? He was a large common house at the foot of the hill. All the Pilgrims lived there the first year. Governor Breakfast House used to sit right here where the pharmacy is. And across the street where the post office is was the site of William Brewster's home. Elder Brewster, religious leader for the Pilgrims. He had a large vegetable garden at the foot of the hill. There were natural springs down there, plenty of fresh water, and the garden flourished. Today it is a beautiful park. We call it Brewster Gardens. And I will show it to you in just a few minutes. As I go around this corner, look up the hill, you'll see the large stone church. That is the first church of Plymouth Unitarian. It has been rebuilt five times, the last time in 1898. And there have been continual worship services there ever since 1620. Wow. On the right hand side, the 1749 Courthouse and Museum is the first and oldest courthouse in the country. The present building was constructed from timbers from the original courthouse and that is a free exhibit open to the general public. Right behind that first church is Burial Hill. Governor Bradford and his son are buried there side by side, and it's interesting to go through that cemetery to read the inscriptions on those old headstones. Unfortunately, he did not survive the first year. I now call your attention across the street to the Brown House. 
the one that looks like it's being held up by the red one. That is the Sparrow House, built in 1640. And that, my friends, is the oldest standing house in the town of Plymouth, over 350 years old. Today they use it for pottery classes, and the public is invited in every day but Wednesday for a tour of the pottery exhibit at the old houses. Look to the left, the house sitting on the corner. That is on the site of the original Jetty Park Grist Mill, built in 1632. We do have a replica of the Grist Mill on the left as we go down this hill. Yeah. And this is a working mill. We do grind cornmeal in here periodically. There is a water wheel on the side of the building that turns a grindstone inside the mill. On the right hand side is Jenny Pond, man made by John Jenny over 350 years ago, made so that the pilgrims would have water power to grind clean and corn. This does freeze over in the winter time. It's a great place for ice skating, it's quite safe. If you should happen to fall through, you simply get wet feet because it's just a few inches deep. And at this point of the tour, we usually ask for a lucky number from 1 to 10. Does anybody have a lucky number? 7. 7. That's a very popular one. 2. Now what that 7 does is gives you 7 trips around this circle to see the birds and the flowers and the trees. Mm. We'll take 2. No, we're not going to go again. We just like to have a little fun. Somebody, seem to be enjoyed. Somebody has a very infectious laugh back there. I think they're having a good time. But we do like to have a little bit of fun. Now we have 365 freshwater ponds in Plymouth. Most of them are fed by natural springs. This one is not because it's man-made. But it gets its water from Mill Pond about a quarter of a mile to the west. The Mill Pond is at a higher elevation, so the water naturally runs down the hill and empties into this basin. It, it runs out at the other end of the pond. It runs under the road, onto the water wheel, on the side of the grist mill, then into the town brook, and finally into the ocean. Right in front of us, you can see the grist mill. Now, the water wheel is not turning at this time, but it does work. And right around the back of the building, there is a pathway. That path goes down through Brewster Gardens all the way to the ocean. That's a lovely walk down there. It runs right alongside the town brook. Now, directly across the street in front of us, there is a powder magazine where the pilgrim stored the gunpowder. On the right hand side, you will once again see the Sparrow House, the oldest house in the town of Plymouth. That is one of the first houses to ever use real glass in their windows. And on the right hand side down below you'll see the pathway, the town book that I mentioned as they wind away from Jenny Pond down here under these bridges to the ocean. Out there at least the one o'clock area every hour, hour, hour 
and it returns from the plantation every hour on my half hour. So that's the grade school. Right across the street, the previous high school, now the town office building. And whenever I come down this road, I do ring the bell. I ring that because I live in the big white house. Right around the corner of this building and just over the fence, I let my family know where I am. We have lived there for 40 years. And the house was built in 1900. The windows have no nails in them. They're all held together with wooden pegs. Right across the street, there are some large trees. Those are beech trees. They're very old. And I wouldn't be surprised for what the pilgrims saw these trees at one time. Rock is below ground. And I told you that Elder Brewster had a vegetable garden down here at the foot of the hill. When we get to the corner, if you look right across the street, you'll see where it was located. Today, it is a beautiful park called Brewster Gardens. Chief Master Soich stands guard on top of the hill. He was chief of the Wampanoag Indians that befriended the pilgrims. On the right-hand side, the statue of Governor Bradford, the historian for the pilgrims. They did much research on that statue. Before deciding, that was just about his actual size. And now, my friends, that brings us back to Pullman Park where we started the tour. I do hope that you have enjoyed it. Enjoy the rest of your stay in Pullman. Have a safe journey home and come back to see us again. Pullman Park is under this canopy on the right-hand side. Now, as I said, I'm going to be here for about 10 minutes. If anybody would like to transfer, you can go on to the other trolley right up ahead of us. Otherwise, I'll be here for 10 minutes and walk around and catch this trolley when it leaves. If you are getting off, please watch your step when leaving. And again, thank you for coming. Inside this building here. Guys, look around at me. Alan. This is Plymouth Rock, Massachusetts. This is the Mayflower too. We can go on that, I bet, Alan. You want to go on it? On what? Walk on that. Do we have to pay? I don't know. Probably. I don't care to you. Are you zooming in on it? Come on. Are you? Okay.
Mayflower to. We'll, we'll come back down in our car and get on it. Okay. Hmm. We'll come back down in there. White House with a fence on the roof. Our society house built in 1754 by Edward Winslow. Inside you will find 17, 18, 19th century furniture and pictures. And one of the main features of the building is a large flying staircase. The flying staircase is one that has no visible means of support. And down below in the park, you can see that fountain with the monument. Or the monument with the fountain, however you want to see it. That was dedicated in 1920 to honor the women that sailed across from the Mayflower. The names of those 29 women are inscribed in the back of the monument, and only six of them survived the first year. Mm. There were 102 pilgrims on board the Mayflower when it sailed. One died during the trip, and there was one bird. There was a youngster they called Oceanus. Off to the right, tied up at the pier, is Mayflower II. Built in England, that was sailed across to Plymouth in June of 1957, a journey of 55 days. The only modern day equipment they had on board at that time was a two-way radio. The ship is 106 and a half feet long, fully laden, 181 tons. The original Mayflower went back to England, was used on the trade routes for a while, and then sold for salvage. And we get it. Hold it back up and get it. Hold it, get it good this way. You just hear it. I'll get this way. They already got it. Out of the harbor, way. there is a large salt, about 10 feet each time. It takes a little more than six hours for the tide to go up, six hours to come back in. Now, if you look off at the haze off the distance, you can see the outline of a hill. You can't see the monument, but there is one on the top. That is the monument to Captain Miles Standish, who was in charge of the military for the pilgrims. He lived in Plymouth for a period of time and then moved to Duxbury and helped to found that town. Okay, and I'll be stopping right up the street here for you ladies. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I didn't forget you. You did forget. Didn't forget. Ivan I've been known to, though. <laughs> I, had, I had two elderly ladies on about a year ago, and they wanted to get off somewhere, and I went right by it. <laughs> and they went around twice, and they never said a word. <laughs> They were very nice about it. Watch your step, please. You're welcome. You ladies, I I I took care. You ladies enjoy yourself. You too. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. On the right hand side is the town pier where the commercial fishermen come to unload the daily catch. You can also see the folks getting on the boat for the whale watch. Just ahead on the right hand side there is a large rock with two anchors, the monument to the men that lost their lives in the sea. And then if you look to the left, right after we go by Mama Beer's restaurant, there's a large yellow building up on top of the hill. That is the Hedge House Museum built in 1809. And that is what is known as a living museum. That means that the building is in such a condition you can actually live in it. Now we're going down onto the town pier. This is where you would come to get the Captain Johnson. You are quite welcome. It was my pleasure. Bye bye. Now you folks have your own private tour, see that? Yeah. <laughs> now if you have never been on a whale watch, you're missing something. My wife and I have been out every year for the past eight years, and we have seen whales every time. Mostly we see the humpback whales, but we've also seen some finbacks. Finback whales are the second largest mammals on Earth, second only to the large uh, blue whale. benefit of those who do not live in a lobster area. This is where I'd like to show you some lobster boats. And 
rough and traps, if at all possible, so that you can see the type of equipment that is used. Look out in the water, you see that black and white boat. On the far side, there's sort of an A-frame with a uh, block and tackle hanging from the end of it. That is the identifying feature for most lobster boats. And look to the left, right behind this back truck, there are some lobster traps stacked up on that trailer, one on top of the other. Now what they do with that block and tackle is they take the rope that is attached to the lobster buoy floating on the surface, they place it over the block and tackle, wrap it around a winch, and the winch pulls the lobster trap up into the boat. We call those lobster traps or lobster pots, either one, it doesn't make any difference. Some of them are made of wood, some are made of wire, some of them are square, some are half round. And it takes a lobster about seven years to grow to legal size. They grow by shedding their shell. The body out goes in shell is my long peninsula. Driving on it is restricted to residents of Plymouth or four-wheel drive vehicles. There are some cottages out there. People live in those cottages, but they must provide their own electricity. And that is a natural barrier beach. It is not man-made. One quarter of a mile wide at its widest point. Next, we're going down to Ocean Spray's Cranberry World. And people are surprised when I tell them that Ocean Spray does not grow cranberries. They are a cooperative. They buy the berries from the farmers, but then process and market them. Cranberries are grown in only six states. Massachusetts, New Jersey, Wisconsin, Michigan, the state of Washington, and Oregon. Picking season is late September to October, and there are two methods of picking. In the dry method, they run a machine across the dry vines. In cold, the race to raise off the vines into the crates. In the water method, they plug the bog about two feet deep, and the machine goes across the bog, feeding the water until the berries pop loose and float to the surface. They then force the two to that's why we go here. It goes to the right, don't it? <laughs> yeah. This is that's a rivery. That's south. It's or that's west, I mean. Oh. Well, you want to go west, don't you? You don't uh, want to go east, 44. Yeah, we're supposed to go back here, Dad. We're close. Yeah. God, we always screw up. Well, that's nothing wrong with that. We'll make it right again. Here we go. You're going east? Look, get on video. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going around the circle again. You might go west on it, 44 to ton, see? It goes to the right, it goes to the left, don't it? Turn there where you, where you Watch it now. They got yield. See this? Go west. Sign, follow, follow that white car up through there. That's west. You want to go west? West to, to Route 24, there it is. Is it 24? Yeah. Is it? That's, what that's where you want to go. Up here to Route 24. Wait, wait, no, not that one, that's north. Is it? Okay. Oh, yeah, that's to Boston. Where that's going this? Turn, wait. Keep on trucking. Keep on straight. South 495 right there. Channel, where's this at, Alan? Fall River? 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 Fall that's the battleship's not even getting them. Well, the assembly was divided. I can't get them either. Let's not worry about it. Let's not worry about it. We're right down there. They're going over the ocean. This is the ocean, Mom. This is the ocean. They're going over the ocean now. This is the ocean. 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 Alan, here, maybe you can get the battleships back. The next morning,
got lost then. Yeah. It was in the dark.
went to Boston. And
where we stopped in Connecticut to buy gas.
View the Poconos from our motel room in Pennsylvania, Pocono Mountains in Pennsylvania. This is where we stayed. We're getting out of the Poconos now some, so they're not very high here, but they're beautiful. Alan automatic focus ain't working. This is Highway 80 that we're going to be going on, back to Como, in Pennsylvania. This is our room here. Alan and William still in bed. They don't want to get up. This is a picture above Alan's bed. And this is a picture above our bed. And 
This is Alan. He don't want to get out of bed. It's William. Evidently they don't realize how late it is. I'm all ready to go and they're still in bed. <laughs> Pocono, Jenkins, this road that bad? Gosh, I thought we had some mountains coming up here. Going to Pennsylvania. July the 9th. 9.30. Our vacation. Pittsburgh. Mom said no. <laughs> Ooh, these rocks are pretty.
good. Semi is missing. Right. Let me try it again. Yeah, you better see this. I'm down. Heard me once in a long time. There it is. Got a big semi, boy. You might know we'd be right behind a big semi. But we can't get nothing. And it's always semis to block my view. semis. You know what? This ain't working. Yeah, and you know what else? Um, Pretty mountains, we got all this mess in the road. Ruins my scenery. Pittsburgh mom says no.
by the time I get it. Why does it go pause, standby, pause, standby? music anymore for me.
out the pause or standby, they're gone.
can't even get him. <laughs> well, I can't see nothing now. You really did it, Dad. I'd like you stop. I wasn't even recording it. That's so stupid. I do everything. I screw everything up. Oh, gosh. It's sick. Indiana. They're getting the pretty clouds. Because that's about the only pretty scenery there is. <laughs> oh, my. But it's going to rain on us. We're in Angola, Indiana. <laughs> I've had it since Christmas. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty nice. We just went to the east and, and east coast, and it was really, we got it on tape, and oh, that'd be great. yeah, it was. Whoops. Nice boy. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Oh. Say hi to Grandma. Say hi to Grandma. Ralph. Hi, baby. <laughs> hey, what's your problem, Ralphie? My flowers in 19, July 1993. Raffi. I must get you, Sue. No. <laughs> Hush.
baby.